Uh, yeah, Mac, you winning this dunk contest is like the ultimate underdog story. You're an underdog. I feel like, like myself, we're like underdogs, right? Don't really pass the eye test. No, but literally, they probably look at you. You don't look like an NBA player, right? How do you embrace the underdog mentality when you approach a game? How was that playing with LeBron? Why do you have crazy hops? How do you have such a, a big vertical and all that? Just a lot of... Reverse 360 slam, Mac McClung. Professor Lai. All right, today we're on site with hoop star and dunk phenom Mac McClung. What's up, man? Thanks for being here, bro. You have won me over, Matt. I'm going to say this. Matt McClung has saved the dunk contest. Wait, wait, let me see. Two years Ten. straight. That's a 720. That's almost oh a 720. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's Mac McClung, Lakers dunk. Up ahead for McClung, and Mac McClung will throw it down on the reverse dunk to end the season. All right, so there it is, your first NBA dunk or first NBA viral dunk? That's my first NBA dunk. First NBA dunk. That's crazy, actually. That's what shows you a dunk phenom, right? Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. You've been in the NBA twice now, right? Yeah. Or three times. So I feel like a lot of people don't know that, though, right? Yeah, you know, I've just had my stints up and down, but, you know, the, the goal is to stick. But, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful yeah. for those opportunities. Cool. Meet the underdog who stole the show at the NBA dunk contest overnight. Welcome to the NBA. <laughs> Taking his time. Reverse 360 slam. So let's get right into it. You first hit the nationwide b-ball scene with your online mixtapes. How was that for you? Just going from playing high school ball and the next thing you know you got to press at your game and it's like a big deal. Yeah, being where I was from, a uh, super small town, like just having all those cameras there was a big shock. But like all me and my boys had a lot of fun with it. And, you know, it was a great it was a great time in my life for sure. Yeah. And then you guys won, right? So we won our first uh, first state championship in school history. That was a lot of fun to be a part of. That was kind of a dream uh, come true movie -esque kind of situation. So it was a lot of fun, man. You know, when it comes to dunking, like I feel like you're so known for your, your, your jumping talents, like incredible in dunking. But what was your first stamp? I had a windmill fast break and people kind of caught on to it. And that kind of got people like, well, let's see if he can do it again. So what, what age did you dunk for the first time? I wasn't that young. I think it was like maybe 16, 15. It was right before my freshman year. I right. had my first dunk. You say not that young. But... Well, people do it now in like sixth <laughs> grade. So, you know, it's that's different. true. You know, your online mixtape's got a lot of hype. Do you think that it sort of put an X on your back and like made people go at you harder because you were known? Yeah, I felt like it did for sure. You know, I try not to concentrate on what other people do, but I definitely feel like they wanted to prove that they don't think I'm that good. It was good for me. It was a good challenge. How, how was it at Texas Tech? That was one of the most fun years of my life. Being the point guard, getting, we were number seven in the country for a lot of the year. And, you know, it was so fun winning and being a part of that culture. It, it was a great time. So coming up after Texas Tech, you submit for the draft, go undrafted. How, how did that feel at that point for you? Um, just talking to a lot of people, I felt like that was going to be my story, my situation, and you know, I've always kind of been the underdog, so I was like, you know, some really credible people that I respect were like, hey, like, it's time, like, you know, find a way. So uh, that's what I've been trying to do and consistently prove myself and prove my value. I feel like overall that's the takeaway, though. I think you're actually slept on. Like, I knew you were a player, but I think you were a lot better than I anticipated. Do you do you still feel like it's always a proving ground every time you take the court? Yeah, I do, but I kinda, I, it used to be like, I felt like I got to prove to other people, but now it's just to prove to myself. He's four for five from three, steps into another. Oh. He's on fire. It's like, you know, who I am. Just like as an IQ player, I feel like people don't realize that, like as a point guard, like how I help teams win. And A lot of people would be shocked to know, like you've been in the NBA twice. Talk about your experience with the Bulls and the Lakers. Beard, here he is. For his first points. Yeah, I got um, two 10 days with the Bulls. That was a great experience, um, you know, and then I got the two-way with the Lakers and got to play with them for a little bit. And uh, both of them were great experience that I tried to make the most of. Um, yeah, that's the goal. The goal is to play in the NBA and find a way back there. 
I think people need to know too. Like you had like good game. You know what I'm saying? Like you were solid. Nobody, nobody was like, oh, he's a liability or this is a problem. Right. I mean, I didn't play many minutes with the Bulls. I was, I was, uh, I got in at the end of the game. But with the Lakers, I got pretty good, pretty good minutes. Whatever I saw, I was like, it just looks solid. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like you deserve. That. I feel like you deserve your spot. It's just a matter of you finding the right situation. The biggest thing is patience. It's God's timing, not my timing. And I'm gonna continue to work. And you know, when that is rewarded, is, is not up to me. But I'm just gonna try to be the best, best me I can be, as the cliche saying. 100 percent, 100 percent. Do you feel like this is your biggest stage where you can kind of get a lot of notoriety? Uh, Matt McClung, all the credit in the world to him. Indeed, white men can jump. No doubt about that. Um, I don't really do it for the notoriety. I think I'm just looking at it as like a great opportunity. I don't know what will come from it, but I'm just gonna like try to, you know be like be prepared to make the most of it but um whatever happens to that is 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 what happens sure sure how long did it take you to prepare and which one give you the most problems to be honest the 540 at the end i didn't make it at all yesterday to be honest with you so oh no man down, man uh, down. let's hope that doesn't happen in the dunk contest no that's not happening in the dunk contest don't worry yeah, do you feel like your game is slept on because you're such a dynamic dunker it's like even with me right if I play, we got so many of the moves, but like I actually started, I was a shooter. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like that gets completely slept. It's almost like I can't shoot because it's all they think about is breaking ankles. So do you feel like for you, it nullifies how people view your game? That's a good question. You know, in high school, I used to like worry about that. I was like, man, they think I'm just dunking. Like, I'm not going to dunk this game just to show them, you know? And uh, the thing was, I just stopped caring. You know, I stopped yeah. worrying about it and I was like, uh, you know, like I was saying, I know who I am. I'm just going to be that. And what people think of is not really like I don't, I'm, their opinion doesn't give me value or, you know, add or subtract value for me. So I feel like, you know, it's something I've kind of gotten away from and it's helped me in a way. I love that. That's a good approach. So right now, Max getting into some practice dunks. He's going to pull off from the contest. Oh, that's crazy. Talk about this. You know, you're playing the G League, but you've had a couple NBA call ups, right? What is life like compared to playing in like an NBA A market? Like what is that? What are the contrasts? It's a lot different. Um, first of all, I'll say I kind of, in a way I love it because you know, I've always been the underdog. Like when you go places and there's no like water, like there's stuff like you're just like, everybody is fighting out the mud to get it. And like, there's something beautiful about everybody working so hard to achieve their dream and, uh, their dream and being a part of that is so cool. Um, but no, when you get those call ups and you go that you're in those, you're on those planes and you're eating that food and then you come back and you're on Uber Eats, like it's uh it's all about adapting, I think, and it's been a lot of fun. I feel like that's a Hooper's attitude, right? That's how I looked at it too. I've, I looked at it as like it was more of a proving ground. And I actually learned to love playing the minor leagues. It certainly got to feel good when you are up there, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think a lot of us believe. Uh, that's where we're supposed to be, and when it's time, we will be. So just staying ready, man. I, I really believe I can help a team in some way, so I'm just staying ready. And I've heard you even gotten offers overseas. Like, you could have actually been a millionaire right now playing overseas, but you've held off on that because of your dream to get a permanent spot in the NBA. Yeah, first, I, I want to say, like, I think you can go overseas and find your way back. Um, this year, I did get those offers, and uh, you know, it's it's hard when you're talking with your family and your agent. Like your agent's really got to believe in you to be like, "Hey, turn down this amount of millions and then stay in the G League." But um, that's just really credit to my circle and my agent and yeah. and the people around me. That's good, and I actually like your answer too. Low key, I was gonna tell you, like, you might want to go over there for a year. You know? What I'm yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying I don't think it's a problem. I just think this year was was here for me. I probably wouldn't be right here if I would have went overseas. I wouldn't have been in this situation right now. No, I actually agree with your representation too, because the fact you've got several call ups already. So you're right. You're right there. Like their eyes on you. Correct. I hope so, man. I, I can't. I don't. I don't. Not in those conversations. But you know, just keep stacking days, and eventually, I think it'll come through. So in the G League, you don't know, like. Obviously, these are under the. This is under the Sixers, right? You don't know when assistant coaches are on site or anything from the NBA. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, I think some people pay attention to that stuff, but I feel like if you're just always worried, like, oh, is someone here tonight, like, you're just like, no, this is who I am every single day. I'm gonna be this guy every single day. I'm gonna be this professional. I'm gonna play this way every day. Like, somebody, you know, the right person will see it. And that's how it is too, right? When you, when you get between the lines, that's how I always tell people. They're always like, what do you think? So and so was at the game, and I'm like, I ain't even know. You know what I'm saying? After the jump ball ramp a couple times, it's over. You just in Hooper mode. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Talk about work ethic. Sure, white dude, you know, trying to get an opportunity from small town, right? The work is what got you to this point. Exactly. I was ranked like 300, you know what I mean? Like a two star. It's not like I was like, oh, he's going to be this and that. Like that was, that's never been my stigma as being chosen to be this or that. Or So one thing I fell in love is just the journey and the work. Like uh, 
every time I look like if something happens, I get a call, it's like I just get to work for that much longer. Like I get to get better for that much longer. Like I don't, I don't attach to any goals really at this point in my life. Like my, my like the dream is the journey is what I always say. Like the work is, is really the gift and getting to do that is like, it's a blessing. And I look at it that way. And when the accomplishments come, it's just like um, part of the process, you know? More, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you have crazy hops? Like, cause I mean, some people can say like, oh, it's fully genetic, right? But then I think a lot of people train to get their hops. How do you have such a big vertical and all that? Uh, a lot of hard work with my dad, credit to, you know, my family, like they really, uh, my dad introduced me to plyometrics and I fell in love with him at like, you know, fifth grade. And I just started doing them all the time. Wow. And, uh, my bounce kept getting better and better and I just like became obsessed with it and it's all I would do and um, you know then you start dunking I started falling in love with like different dunks and you know between the legs and obviously and uh, yeah just just kept working at those and eventually got got to a certain point where I could do them. So plyometrics in fifth grade that's kind of crazy I never even heard of that you know what I mean so yeah. maybe I would add hops you know what I'm saying <laughs> had I thought of that but that's really cool wow okay so Mac McClung minus the plyometrics today how would your jumping be? I still think I could dunk. I don't think it would be near as good. Um, and it probably wouldn't have happened as soon as it did. You played in the same state as Allen Iverson in high school. Well, I think you even played in the Iverson Classic though, right? Right. Allen Iverson was someone who inspired me. You know, when I was in fifth grade, I mastered that crossover and that's what like put me, like that was the first time I got noticed as like a guy with handles or whatever. I crossed adults and I was like this tall. Mm -hmm. Has there been any influence from him on your game? Most definitely. I think my first jersey, I was out in elementary school playing football in the Denver Nuggets Allen Iverson jersey. And, you know, I think what really stuck out with him is just his confidence and belief in himself. And I thought that was so cool. And, you know, I obviously tried to bring that into my own flavor, but just seeing his confidence really inspired me. Talk about your approach to the game. You know, you're an underdog. I feel like, like myself, we're like underdogs, right? You come from a small town don't really pass the eye test necessarily. You might more than me, I don't even know six foot, but like, no, but literally they probably look at you, you don't look like an NBA player, right? How do you embrace the underdog mentality when you approach a game? Yeah, being from a small town, you know, being who I am, I just always, people wanted to tell me, you know, something wasn't gonna happen or, you know, you're not that good, like don't, don't look to do that. And I think, you know, God has blessed me with a belief in, in myself where like even people at the top, like, are saying, no, that's that's not it. Trusting yourself is the biggest thing about being an underdog. If you know you're something, uh, you can, if you work, you know, you can become it. You can, you can reinvent yourself any day and you can become exactly what you want to, no matter what anybody says. I think that's the biggest thing. I love that. I 100% agree with that too. You're an underdog. LeBron has always been the opposite. LeBron's like a favorite from the time he was in middle school all the way up and he's overachieved even as the favorite. You've overachieved the underdog. You guys got the chance to be on the same team. How was that playing with LeBron and just watching him day in and day out, just even if it was a short glimpse, how was that? It was a blessing, man. Uh, LeBron is, is first, he's a kind person. I think that was the coolest thing about it. You know, when I first got there, it was like, man, am I in 2K? Like, I hear this voice, like, you know, like, it's crazy to, you know, be around him in person, but he um, he's a kind person. I think that was the first thing I noticed and really respected about him, but also his work ethic. You know, he was there, and I tried to get there real early one morning, he was already there. I was like, man, like, you know, there's a reason who he is who he is. So it was really cool being around him, seeing how he loves the game and film sessions when, you know, it's been a while and everybody's like kind of checked out, like he's still talking, he's locked in. Like, you know, that made me kind of step up a little bit of love and respect for him as well. Did you guys get a chance to talk dunking at all? Nah, we really didn't talk dunking, uh, not much at all. How do you think he would view you like entering the dunk contest? I don't know, you'd have to ask him. I don't want to speak for anybody, yeah. but that would just be, you know, you'd have to ask him. Okay, I think he'd root for you. Oh, we'll see, man, we'll see. Cool, man, there it is. Mac McClung, hoop star, dunk phenom, future NBA player, I believe. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for sitting down, man. Thank appreciate you, man. you. Appreciate you. He had five points in the third. Six threes and 37 points. This guy's a hooper. But today, we're gonna give you a little taste of my world, some street ball moves. I'm gonna teach you a couple moves. Let's do it. Cool? Man. All right, let's get it. it. All right, getting into it first. I know you was up here, you told me you had no moves, but I actually felt like you had a decent handle. No? I thought you were talking about dance moves. I got very few dance moves also, so <laughs> All right, we ain't even gonna get into that. I wanted to show you how to just go between the legs. Okay. Players in the NBA, when they dribble between the defender's legs, I feel like they just take it when it's there. They don't actually know how to orchestrate it themselves. You know, like when I, when I play, I feel like I can always decide when to go between the legs or like how to punk the defender or spin him around or whatever with right. it. Okay, but there's a lot of there's a lot of like strategy to it. Okay. <laughs> When 
I approach a defender to go between the legs, my main goal is to get him to turn, uh, if I can get him to turn a little bit. So if I try to go between the legs, if he was like straight up like this, it'd be really hard, right? Because then you got to go like all the way around him. But if I could get him to turn by like doing a crossover or something like this, if I can get him to get to this position right here, then it's a lot easier than you can like go between the legs. But the way I do it is. Number one, the strength of my game is cardio. So like it's better to do this when the players are tired, like, mm -hmm. like later in the game, if you still feel good and the defender might be worn down, yeah. that's the best. But if I can get him to turn, the way I like to do this is, I like to do like a little bit of a step back. So it's like a step back into like faking a jumper okay. and then going between the legs. So quarter speed, if I was up here with DZ, I'd try to get him to turn. It could be anything. It could be a sham god, it could be a stiff leg. It could be just a crawl, it could be this way. You know what I'm saying? But I want to try to open him up. And as I do it, it's here, looking for the jumper and boom, down. A lot of people don't think it can be done just because it's never really been tried like that. Not, not that much on the main stage. If I go to the right side, I do it a lot of times this way here. It's here, it's like, you know what I'm saying? But you can continue to do it over and over. Yeah. You want to try to go through a quarter speed? All right, let's, all right, so <laughs> the biggest thing is you want to get him. Turn the defender with a crossover, so like, pull back. Kind of get him on the side. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I like that. So see how you did it right there? It was almost like you just did it looking down. And I think that's how people would normally do it. The, the key for me is like, it's all about really being deceptive. Here. So if I got into it like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to learn how you do that one cross. Yeah, yeah. Just like, what are you doing right there? Just, okay, let's talk about that. Let's do that. You do need this one. You do need this. Look, I showed this to Dame Lillard, ex-NBA legend, Jason Williams. I showed it to NBA guys asked why they don't use this move. I actually love this move. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you basically giving a hezzy, right? You're running full speed, like to go by him, mid stride. You want to pull it back over your forward foot, but the key is to be able to retract really fast. So if he's guarding me here, oh, yeah. so it's easy to one, two, boom, and pull it back. So it's all about pulling it back quick. If I can go into that step back from here, look, yeah, it's like right. We'll walk through it. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so. Of course, me. Messing right here. here. To the stiff, boom. Right here between. Look, fake the jumper, yeah. Oh, fake the jumper. Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that was. That looked right though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this though, for take, for literally take three or whatever, that's like, who knows what that could be, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. All right, cool, I like that. So next one, we do off the heezy, okay? <laughs> He do all this dribbling, but he not finished at all. He's not reaching. Oh! 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 They got me! Get out of here! This one's the less conventional of a move. People, like, they just try to do it, right? They just try to throw it, but there's more strategy to it, okay? There's a safe one with the roll, and then there's the unsafe was like, oh, throw. Yeah, this, this is, this is <laughs> so for the off the easy to throw, you want to get into, like, an in and out before. You got to do something to kind of, like, bring you to a position where it's easy to come up. Go off the heezy and get it right back, right? Instead of just going down, we're off going the easy, man. Right here. So, <laughs> so here's here's how I do it: get in and out here, to off the heezy, and then to right back into it. I'll go right to it. I'll go, right to I'll go it. bad, bro. No, 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 crazy. Okay. Crazy. Well, okay, here's the thing: we should talk about this though. It, it's not a painful move if, if you do it right. It's supposed to hit somebody in the forehead, like actually decently lightly. I know during the game it can get a little hard, but even if even if it gets hard, it, it doesn't really hurt if you do it right. Now, if you hit somebody in the nose and the mouth, is different. Yeah. But it's a risky move, you know what I mean? And some people, you should say, they, they don't do it the right way, so they might try to fling that joint from like 10 yeah. feet away. And I've been victim to that too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, I, you know, we try to keep it, keep it respectful. Keep it respectful. <laughs> all right, what do you think? Let's go. Yeah, all right, so the first thing you said. Yeah, I like to go into an in and out. out. Yeah, because you have to bring the ball to, like, you have to bring it to a pause to where it's, like, natural to get it. Oh, like, it's already up. Yeah, if you came and then, like, did that, that's going to be a hard one. You know what I mean? I like to actually be mid-play here, boom, or boom. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> boom. Let's go. You out of there. That's not bad for take one. <laughs> Second one's if I wanted to be a little bit more safe. Oh, Coming in here, I get down in the, this position right here, like a stagger step, and I go one, two, three, 
here and then slide straight straight down roll it off the head the dope one about this is even if the defender gets physical you can actually pull this off so like if he if he's being physical and i'm here it's you could like you can get in and bring it to yourself really fast and one thing i know about going off the heezy though is just from years doing it it gets the crowd going crazy but also the defender is like infuriated so if <laughs> yeah. you go off the heezy i can see that you your next move might be between the legs you know what i'm saying like it might be that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, usually usually somebody's thinking, like, are you effing serious? And they're not thinking about the next crossover, next between your legs, the hezzy to the rack. I'll try it. Right. <laughs> so it's going to get real, like, close with you. You yeah. just, like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boom. Sorry. Shoulder. That's a move, too. That's a different one. Let's get up with that one right there. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he might turn that into the windmill or something. All right, so there it is, man. Mac McClung, appreciate you being yes, on here. Appreciate you, man. Before we sign off, I want to ask you right now, we were supposed to actually collab a year ago. I got hurt. I think we maybe could get another Professor Live collab 2v2 at Venice. Let's get to it, man. All right, man. Professor Live.